getting back on the highway means getting back into talking, and that means we need to talk about touch screens. I would love to show you, but that's reserved for a documentary I'm never going to finish. So, instead I'll just tell you. Touch screens are the worst user interface ever created. I mean, let's be honest, they're not necessarily the worst interface ever created. But in terms of stuff that people use on a regular basis, mainstream user interface devices, touch screens are the worst. Now, you might be saying, but Jody, touch screens are what's on phones and tablets and even some laptop computers. And there are even some desktops. There are kiosks that are touch screens. And touch screens let you redefine anything. You can have the interface device be anything you want it to be. And yeah, okay, that's fine and great. I'm not saying that touch screens are not something that, hey, at least it makes it possible to do certain things that you can't do otherwise. But consider for a moment the reason that those things are touch screens, the reason that your kiosk at McDonald's or your cell phone in your pocket are touch screens. Why are they touch screens? Have you ever really thought about it? Have you ever put any actual effort into going, hmm, <clears throat> why is this a touch screen and not something else? Well, I can tell you why phone screens are touch screens. It's pretty straightforward. Nothing else fits. That really is it, because guess what? We used to have phones that didn't have touch screens. They had keypads, they were folding phones, or they were even Blackberries that had full keyboards with keys so small you needed a paper clip to poke them. I mean, they were really tiny. But we used to have non-touch screen phones. We had phones with trackballs. We had phones, at one point, we had the ultimate in interfaces, which was the HTC Dream or the uh, T-Mobile G1 is what I bought, the, basically the exact same phone, the original Android developer phone. Five row keyboard, four physical buttons on the main interface, and then there was, was a side button, I think, and a touch screen to boot, a slider phone that fit in your pocket, but had a five row full keyboard and a mouse. I mean, it had the buttons to be a full mouse. It had a trackball and two buttons that weren't call buttons. It, that's pretty great. It was pretty great. I could actually VNC remote desktop into a computer at my house and control it using my phone. There are VNC viewers for phones now, but guess what? There's no keyboard. There's no trackball. The only input is a touch screen, which means you have no way to input things other than poking the actual screen you're trying to work with. To get a keyboard, now half your screen is a keyboard. Mouse? Well, sorry, the whole screen is the mouse, but it's not a mouse that you can actually, like, drag and drop things with the same way you're used to. There's all this inferior mapping that has to go on between a touch screen and better devices, like a keyboard, mouse, or touchpad. Yeah, even a touchpad is better than a touch screen, because at least a touchpad moves a pointer and not... It, it isn't your screen. At least you can do precise pointing with a touchpad. Let me give you an idea. The, the actual phone, I'm recording the audio for this on. Oh, shit. It stopped recording the fucking audio? Nope. It, it's still recording. It just touched the other tab. So, this is the phone that I'm recording the audio on. Now, I want you to look at something. You see the buttons on the bottom? You see those buttons? Now, you see how fat my fingertip is? that. That is the number one problem with a touch screen. The number two problem is, you see those buttons on the bottom? Do you feel them? Can you feel them? No. No, you can't. No, you can't feel them. You can't do anything of the sort. Do you, uh, oh, the wire's stuck now. That That's wonderful. That's just exactly the kind of thing that would happen to me. Really? Really? Well, I guess that wasn't a good choice. guess that wasn't a good demonstration. Now, was it? <sighs> Maybe I should have used a different phone. But the bottom line is a physical keyboard, a physical mouse, something with edges that you can touch with your fingers, something that doesn't use your fat finger 
as the pointing device. Look, look, okay, I've got a phone with a stylus. I can at least pull the stylus out without yanking my own microphone out, right? So the phone comes with this touch stylus, okay? It's still got a chunky tip compared to a mouse pointer. But, look at that. You, you see that? You see that? Yeah. That's a big difference right there, boy. A big difference. That stylus tip is so much smaller than my finger, and it's still too big, despite being smaller. So yeah, I have a fucking problem with touchscreens. You might be like, well, touchscreens can be adapted. They can become whatever you want them to be. You know, people who do audio stuff can do all kinds of fancy stuff with touchscreen mixing. Like, the touchscreen can provide more controls in a compact space than a physical board. Like, if you have a huge mixer board versus a touchscreen, the touchscreen, you can slide the screen or whatever to get to more mixers. And with a physical board, it has to be a physical board. Okay, I get that. I understand that that use case, a touch screen might actually help improve things, but you know what? You know what else that use case has a problem with? Touch screens. Because that bar that you're touching to do your mixing, you're not touching a physical control. You can't feel how much you're moving it. All you feel is the screen underneath you that your finger's squeaking against. If your finger gets some kind of grease or dirt on it, not only is it going to deposit all over the screen and make it disgusting and difficult to see and not feel very nice to move your hand on, but it's also going to feel bad on your finger between your finger and the screen. You got that, that, that potato chip finger, you know, or you rub your head and you've got oily skin like me, and now you smear oil all over your fancy iPad mixer or whatever? Well, hey, that's there, buddy. You know, it's not going anywhere until you clean your screen. Now, if you were using a trackball, an optical trackball, a mouse, a touchpad, a keyboard, an actual physical mixer, guess what? That's not a problem. You know what? You get grease on your mixer, yeah, it's a problem. It's not as much of a problem when the only haptic feedback you've got is that the flat surface is underneath you. You can't feel when sliding that bitch stops. When it hits the end, there is no stop because it's a touch screen, not a mixer you can't feel all of this feedback. It's the same thing in cars. Down here, I have a screen. It is a touch screen. Thank God Mitsubishi barely uses it. It's, it's really only used to like switch inputs and send seat controls over Bluetooth. There's not much else that you can do with this touch screen. Underneath it, I have physical controls for all the climate control. I, ha I actually have buttons on the wheel too, physical buttons on the wheel. There are a few physical buttons right here. There's a volume knob despite it being a touch screen. Now why do I have all these things? Because no matter how you cut it, it's easier for your hand to find a physical button than it is to find a spot on a screen. Worse yet, a redefinable spot on a screen because one of the most important aspects of a user interface is consistency. When you take a flat surface and you put, and I'm going to keep with the paradigm here, and you put mixers, you put sliders on it for audio mixing, you put knobs on it for audio mixing, you can feel out where these are relative to where you are. You can find the edge and you can physically like count over X number of knobs, go down a number of knobs. There it is. <coughs> but with a touchscreen mixer, you can't feel that. Now maybe there are some inferior ways to use the vibrate function to kind of try to add some of that signaling back, but it's still inferior because it's just a pulse. You can't actually feel a physical knob under your finger. You can't feel your here or here. You can't feel how much you've changed that setting, how much you've slid that when it stops moving. You can't feel when you've slid off of it. You can't feel anything to speak of. It's useless because of this lack of tactile feedback. And no, Vibrate's not good enough. If you take a flat surface and you can choose between physical buttons and, and a touch screen, you're going to want the physical buttons every time if you use it regularly and you need to get used to it. You need to be able to use it quickly, which means you need to be able to learn it. 
the other problem is if you have a touch screen now you've not only taken your physical whatever that you have and you've collapsed it into a flat surface with minimal or no feedback in your actual feeling but you've also made it redefinable so not only does this touch screen not give you the same feedback it is much more limited in telling you this slider has hit its maximum this knob has hit the end you are this number of knobs over and this number of knobs down or this switch or that switch or whatever this switch is up this switch is not now not only do you lose that context with your hands that you can just you don't have to look you can just feel it but what's under your fingers what you are manipulating could accidentally get changed so if you have a mixer of some sort and you can toggle between screens if anything anything manages to replicate somehow the toggle between one screen and another and the other screens different I mean that's the whole point right you can redefine the interface so you can switch to a different screen if somehow you accidentally toggle that well now your controls have changed which means that what you're doing with your fingers has changed the same motion will do something different so even if you know what you're doing even if you've memorized it you have the muscle memory down you can do it without even thinking about it because it has become second nature even if you've got those little vibrate pulses that tell you when you're moving your finger around that you've got even if they've thought that far into it and they've given you that feedback oh the screen changed oh shit now you have to interrupt what you're doing to realize what's gone on and this may not take long but the point is it's a break in the workflow realize what's changed figure out how to change it back and then get back oriented into what you were doing before it is an interruption in your workflow and one interruption maybe that's not a huge deal or maybe you're doing a live show and it means the difference between something getting cut at the moment it needs to versus continuing to be there and it causes a disaster <clears throat> maybe some guy starts playing on stage you have his mic disabled for feedback reasons and you didn't switch the mics because oh shit I changed the mixer to the other screen oh no or oh I accidentally bumped the power button and the screen went to sleep and now I have to hit the power button and unlock the tablet oh no all of these problems getting introduced by this this touch screen paradigm everywhere you know and that just that completely ignores the problem of fat finger syndrome that ignores the problem of your hand only being a certain size but phones getting bigger and bigger hold hold a phone in your hand right hold a phone I challenge you hold a phone like this and with your thumb only touch one of the other corners from your dominant thumb the opposite corner bottom or top without your palm here touching any of the screen and when it touches the screen it registers as a poke as if it was your finger when it when your hand touches the screen it it's an incorrect touch but it's still a touch it still registered as a touch <clears throat> a lot of reasons that you have to use a phone two-handed is the screens are too big and the whole screen's a touch screen your hand isn't big enough to reach the other end of the screen the other corners are off limits and this wasn't as big of a problem when UI elements on screens would do things like take up the whole top or bottom or they could be swiped from the bottom or top but now every stupid fucking app on every phone ever seems to despite the fact that the majority of the population is right-handed and oper and might operate the phone one-handed with the right hand has a fucking hamburger menu button in the top left corner the stupid three line things that pop out menus from the left side that's called a hamburger menu for some reason <clears throat> the swipe out for everything is either a top left corner button or a swipe from the left the opposite of where your thumb is practically guaranteeing if you're using it one-handed you either can't do the gesture at all or you register incorrect touches in the process of reaching for the thing you actually mean touch screens are fucking garbage now I will concede that for example if you have a Wacom Cintiq the big you know touchscreen tablet combos that's a different story because you're using a precise stylus 
with a high degree of responsiveness. Like this thing is designed to have pressure sensitivity. It does. It's not a finger touch screen. It's you actually poke it. But that's a whole different level. We're talking about something very different from a tiny, tiny phone and a big fat thumb. Very different indeed. The only reason that touch screens are so ubiquitous is because A, they're cheap. B, people are stupid. They, they can't handle a hardware interface. Touch screens reduce the interface to the dumbest possible thing. And C, when you don't have a very big surface, there's not much else you can do. I mean, I'll be the first to admit the keyboard on a BlackBerry is really too small for most people to comfortably use for a long period. Even the keyboard on the T-Mobile G1, the HTC Dream, it was a great keyboard, but it was tiny. Itty bitty chiclet keys or whatever. They're just little keys. So I understand that maybe a keyboard and a mouse is not practical on a five inch telephone in your pocket and that's the problem with touch screens they are the lowest common denominator they are the interface that you use when you can't or won't put a keyboard or a trackball or mouse or whatever they are the dummies interface they are the interface for drooling idiots that don't know what they're doing that won't know what they're doing that don't care to know what they're doing and yes, it makes it so that complete simpletons can just stab at the screen with their big fat fingers and use an AOL kids type interface with gigantic chunky tiles with a bunch of wasted space in between them. But for people who actually want to get work done, it's shit. It's absolute trash. All that extra white space to make sure you don't fat finger stuff, that means lower information density. It means that if you need to actually get something done, you're looking at half as many items, a third as many items, a quarter as many items, as you would if you had a more precise mechanism for input. And it would be all fine and great if it weren't for the fact that they took away physical keyboards on phones, they don't have them on tablets in general, unless you have a big, clumsy, stupid, awful feeling, thin, fold out case keyboard for a tablet. Frankly, I'd almost prefer just using the stupid on-screen keyboard at that point. And let me get to that too. On-screen keyboards. Piss poor substitute for physical keyboards on a touchscreen device. Because what do they do? They pop out and they use half or more of your device's screen. So now your touchscreen size is cut in half when you use a keyboard. Even worse, sometimes the keyboard causes conflicts with whatever's on the screen such that things don't work right while the keyboard's out or the keyboard doesn't go away when it's supposed to. <clears throat> you know what? If you have a hardware keyboard, you know what? You don't have a problem with the hardware keyboard not going away when it's supposed to and reclaiming that screen space. This guy, man. There's always something on the highway, brothers. Always something. But yeah, basically everything is everything is hot garbage. It's it's all just so bad these days. Touch screens hurt. I understand why people use them. I understand why they're on everything. I know the McDonald's kiosk is a lot easier to use for a person with some kind of serious arthritis in a wheelchair than if they had to like use a keyboard and mouse. It would be pretty stupid, honestly, to have a McDonald's kiosk that uses a keyboard and mouse. That would be a pretty stupid use case. That is actually a good use case for touch screens. There are places where touch screens make sense. I don't even fully like hate the touch screen on a phone thing. My problem is that when you can package a superior input method and you would see significant benefits from that input method, why don't you? What's wrong with you? Why are you doing this to me? And I mean, honestly, with the phones, the answer is just, it's race to the bottom, lowest common denominator, you know, make the phone 0.05 inches thinner, but lose an important feature. That's all it is. They think people want thin phones that have humongous screens. They think that if anybody had their choice that they would have a phone that was the size of a giant piece of paper but that was like one inch that, that, that folded down to like a pill in their pocket. 
And that's just not the case. Some of us don't want that. A lot of us don't want that. Especially people who actually get work done would like to have a goddamn hardware keyboard back, please. I would love to go back to flip phones. Honestly, if there was a way to just get some kind of like, just like a square flip phone with a QWERTY keyboard, a full five row QWERTY keyboard on it, that I could just fold into a pocket square, that would be totally great with me. <coughs> no touch screen, no problem. Give me an optical trackball like the, like the MyTouch 3G phone had. No joke, this thing had a little pad that you move your finger over and it was literally an, a, an, a laser tracking trackball that would track the movement of your fingerprint across the surface. It was a beautiful thing. It actually worked really well. I kind of wonder why optical trackballs have not been created for desktops because it seems like something that would actually be really useful. But no, all that, all that innovation, all that good stuff goes out the window. And it doesn't go out the window for good reasons. It goes out the window because manufacturers realize we can save a few cents by not putting a keyboard on the phone. But what we'll do is we'll advertise it as a thinner phone. So look, this phone is thinner now when you put it in your back pocket because you're a fucking moron that puts your phone in your back pocket that nobody should do. And oh, guess what? Your ass isn't flat. So when you sit down, your phone has a nice ass curve in it. Oh, way to go, dipshits. That, great marketing there. But guess what? That sells more phones because now your phone's a taco. Woohoo! Yay! Yay, touchscreens. Touchscreen make manufacturers more money. Why do you think manufacturers don't want you to be able to repair your ass tacoed phone? Because it, I, they, you, they can't sell you the latest, greatest model if you don't put a butt print in the screen of your existing one. Pick the glass shards out of your ass. But that's sort of straying from the touchscreen centric arguments. That's more of a manufacturers are greedy, shitty pieces of shit argument. So let's not go there for today's session. Anyway touchscreens are crap. I think I've gone over every possible reason why. Uh, if you have more thoughts on that, let me know down in the comments, because I'd love to know. Uh, you know, one of the things I realized I didn't cover is how a lot of the widgets, like a lot of the controls that are used on touchscreens are crap. <clears throat> but I think that the excess white space, imprecise targeting, and for some reason, the slide outs and menus being on the opposite end of the dominant thumb of most of the population, I think that pretty much covers the, the highlights. But you can fill in all the details in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say about this one. Anyway, thanks for listening. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Phone, fucker. Get off your fucking phone.